Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we will talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. In today's video we are going to talk about bioavailability and bioequivalence. So let's start the video. Bioavailability indicates measurement of the rate and extent which is the amount of unchanged therapeutic active drug that reaches the systemic circulation and is available at the site of action. There are two types of blood circulations in the body, pulmonary circulation in which the deoxygenated blood comes out of the heart and goes to the lung for oxygenation and systemic circulation in which the oxygenated blood comes out of the heart and is distributed all over the body. We are here talking about the distribution of drug in this systemic circulation. Let's understand bioavailability with a very simple example. For example, if we take a 100 mg tablet and only 70 mg of the tablet is getting absorbed into the systemic circulation. So we can say that the bioavailability of the drug is 0.7 or 70%. Now coming to the types of bioavailability, we have absolute and relative bioavailability. If the systemic availability of a drug administered orally is determined by doing its comparison with IV or intravenous administration, then it is called absolute bioavailability. We compare it with IV route because in IV or intravenous administration, we directly inject the blood into the blood vessel and we consider that the bioavailability of such drug is 100%. And if the systemic availability of a drug administered orally is determined by doing its comparison with that of an oral standard of the same drug, then it is known as relative bioavailability. Here are some important points which we need to keep in mind. The range of bioavailability is from 0 to 1. It is usually expressed as percentage. An absolute bioavailability of 1 or 100% indicates complete absorption of the drug from gut into the blood vessel. And relative bioavailability of 1 or 100% implies that the bioavailability of the drug from both the dosage form is same but does not indicate that the drug has been completely absorbed or not. Let's talk about some factors affecting bioavailability. Bioavailability varies depending upon the route of administration. Parenteral has the highest bioavailability followed by oral, rectal and topical. Patient related factors, physicochemical properties of the drug like solubility, pKa and characteristics of the dosage form. Now let's see some methods for assessing bioavailability. We have pharmacokinetic methods which are indirect methods. In this we have blood analysis and urinary excretion data. And we have pharmacodynamic methods which are direct methods. In this we have acute pharmacological response and therapeutic response. Coming to the first type of method, pharmacokinetic methods. In this in blood analysis, a drug is given orally and then it is analyzed in the blood after specific interval of time. A plasma concentration versus time graph is obtained. And in urinary excretion data also, a drug is given orally and the drug is analyzed in the urine after some specific period of time. But it should be such that the active ingredient should be excreted unchanged in sufficient amount in the urine and the cumulative data of the drug excreted in urine is directly proportional to the extent of the systemic absorption. Coming to the second methods which are pharmacodynamic methods, in acute pharmacological response, bioavailability can be determined from acute pharmacological response versus time curve or in form of dose response curve. Acute responses like dilation of pupil, muscular contraction or ECG can be measured by using this method. And the therapeutic response method is based on observing clinical responses to the drug formulation given to the patient suffering from disease for which it is intended to be used. For example, for an anti-inflammatory drug, reduction in inflammation is observed. Now let's talk about some pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameters obtained from plasma concentration versus time graph. We get pharmacokinetic parameters like peak plasma concentration or Cmax, Tmax which is the time required to get the peak plasma concentration and the area under the curve which is the total area under the curve. Cmax and Tmax tells about the rate and AUC tells about the extent of the drug absorption. And we get pharmacodynamic parameters like maximum safe concentration above which are the toxic levels, minimum effective concentration below which are sub-therapeutic level and the concentration between these two forms the therapeutic range. We get onset of action and we get the duration of action which is the time for which the concentration remains in the therapeutic range. We get Cmax, Tmax and other parameters directly from the graph but we have different methods for measuring the area under the curve. For example, trapezoidal method in which we divide the area under the curve in many trapezoids and we combine the area of all the trapezoids to find the total area under the curve. 
The second method is the cut and weigh method. In this, the AUC is cut and weighed on an analytical balance. The weight obtained is converted into proper units by dividing it with the weight of a unit area of same paper. Or AUC can be measured by using a planimeter, which measures the area by tracing the outline of the curve. Now let's see what is bioequivalence. So bioequivalence means pharmaceutical equivalents or pharmaceutical alternatives whose rate and extent that is bioavailability of absorption do not show a significant difference when administered at the same molar dose of the drug under similar experimental conditions. Bioequivalence studies are usually performed to compare the rate and extent of absorption of new drug product or a generic equivalent with that of a branded product. Here we can see plasma concentration versus time or bioavailability curves of two products. First is generic or test product and second is a reference or a branded product. We can see that the two curves are almost overlapping on each other. So we can say that both the products are bioequivalent to each other. So guys, this was all about bioavailability and bioequivalence. Thanks for watching. I really hope you liked my video and if you did, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.